Hi, this is Stu Miniman coming to you from Wikibon World Headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts, uh, having a CUBE conversation on the clouds. Uh, joining me for this episode is Steve Keniston, longtime friend of the CUBE, uh, and uh, Steve the Storage Alchemist. Steve, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Thanks, Stu. Thanks for having me, and uh, good to be in the World Headquarters here at Wikibon. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, cloud, of course, is this, this big mega trend we've been following for many years. Uh, we, we talked about last year, it seemed uh, that, you know, really hybrid cloud, uh, you know, really is one of the hot topics of conversation. And uh, with theCUBE, we've got a lot of shows that are going to cover uh, cloud. We already had uh, earlier this year, uh, we've done some OpenStack coverage. Uh, we were looking at the Open Compute uh, Summit, which is rather interesting. I uh, want to give a little bit of preview in this segment of IBM Pulse uh, going on next week. But, uh, you know, Steve, I want to get your, your first thoughts. You know, where are we with the whole conversation cloud? What do you hear in the marketplace? Uh, if you were talking to a CIO, you know, where is their mindset? Yes, do I think um, it's interesting. I think there have been a, a tremendous number of conversations about cloud for, for a very long time. And, uh, you know, pragmatically, I like to get, when I'm in front of customers and I'm talking to customers about cloud and where they're at, I hear a couple of different things, right? I hear one, uh, depending on the size of my company, and, you know, as, as a lot of these conversations go, it's a, it's, it depends kind of thing. Um, if you're in the smaller, medium-sized business type space, I think a lot of folks have turned to the cloud as a way to digest what that technology is by leveraging it for a data protection type of environment. Uh, maybe it's long-term retention, maybe it's a way to get data out of my data center and daily management type of set for things like, you know, off-siting tapes and that sort of thing. But they've been able to do things like test the security, test the performance, test recoverability so that I can, that I can handle and digest my stuff. If I'm at a larger type of a shop, um, I, I'm hearing more of things like, hey, I can spin up infrastructure, and I, and I do mean total infrastructure, like servers and storage in the cloud to be able to allow me to do test dev type stuff a lot faster than I might be able to do internally. So from a, from a practicality standpoint and a, and a realism standpoint, I'm hearing a lot of that type of things. Now, th there are environments where um, especially in startup land where a lot of folks are starting their companies and leveraging clouds. I think you and I had a conversation about gaming is a great place to do something like that. And that's, so, so that's, I think that's for the new company. So we've got the new, we've got the SMB, and we've got the enterprise, all, all leveraging the cloud in different ways. But I think today that's how it's taking form. Yeah, and, and, and Steve, you know, I think you brought, up, you brought up a lot of good points. So first of all, right, it, it's, it's very much kind of depending on, you know, what staff you have and what objectives you have, um, as well as what application fits. As, as we, you know, look at it, um, you know, if you talk to, you know, even a mid-sized company and you say, you know, are you leveraging, you know, software as a service? You know, absolutely. I mean, anybody that's got a, you know, some kind of, you know, field force, probably leveraging Salesforce. You know, they've been around a long time. There's many other services, uh, companies like, uh, you know, ServiceNow and Workday uh, that are really, you know, offering new services that are, you know, transforming a lot of businesses. Uh, and then you say, are, are you leveraging public cloud? Well, you know, Amazon, you know, keeps growing. Uh, latest numbers uh, for, for 2013 look that they're, they're probably over $3 billion uh, worth of revenue there. Of course, what solutions they're selling uh, is a big question we'd all kind of like to understand uh, which piece of, uh, uh, of services they're offering because they kind of blur the line between infrastructure and a service where they just give you kind of that raw compute uh, you know storage and network and uh, you know some platform as a service because they really are offering more services uh, going forward uh, you know we covered at reinvent uh, many of the new services like desktop as a service um, or database as a service they've, they've got big data applications you mentioned gaming lots of services uh, you know streaming for gaming uh, that, that are fitting in there so you know lots of uh, you know different services that they have and, and then of course in my own data centers people are trying to create more cloud so hybrid cloud is usually I've got some of all um, but, you know, I think one of the gaps I've seen, Steve, is, you know, I, I've got all of these pieces, um, but, you know, a, as an IT organization, as a CIO, you know, how do I kind of manage all of those and how do I, you know, do I tie them all together or are they just, you know, all little pieces that I have to manage individually? Yeah, I think what ends up happening is, and again, I think you brought up a lot of good points, right? As, as a CIO looks to the cloud for answers to solutions for, their, for things that are happening within their data center, I think they have to, they're obviously juggling things like cost, right? Is, so cost is one of the objectives of how can I, how can I take that out of my IT budget and, and leverage some of that, that money that I would have either that, that I would normally spend on IT 
but put it towards those projects that are actually going to make make my business more money. So I think with, uh, you talked about big data. I think big data and analytics is starting to drive even smaller companies to be able to be more competitive and really giving fuel to the fire so that if I'm a small bank, right, now there's probably apps, and I'll get into this in a second, apps that allow me to do fraud detection that large banks have been doing for years with a lot of analytics and compute, giving these small banks the ability to, to now um, to, to be competitive. So it, it's interesting. A and, and what I think is, as CIOs look to the cloud is, okay, there's, there's the ability and the need to be able to run my particular application. And the question is, is that something I want outside my four walls or not? And then I think a lot of CIOs are now turning to, if I look at the cloud, is there an opportunity there for me to be able to uh, uh, maybe leverage a new app that does similar things that I'm doing, but as an app, right? So if you think about, you know, I always talk about uh, kids coming out of college these days that are that are moving into data centers and you know computer science or whatever, uh, run, running IT, they're used to the iPhone, right? They're used to the app. They're used to turn it on, it works, it runs, it, it's been tested, and, and, and I can get all the feature-rich functionality, right? So can I, as a CIO, look to the cloud and go, what's out there, what's available? And I think Amazon, like you had pointed out, right, is growing. You know, if they, t if they adopt like an Apple iPhone app type model, right, that could be pretty huge. For yeah, and, and Steve, it's worth pointing out, it, it's, it's not even a binary, you know, do I put it in the cloud or do it inside? You know, there's lots of those modern applications where I can have all the processing be done in the cloud, but have my sensitive data, you know, stay inside. So, you know, obviously security is a top concern. I know you're going to the RSA conference, uh, you know, next week. Uh, so, um, and any comments on kind of security and, you know, internal versus external that you, that you want to touch on? Well, I do, I do think that folks are looking at uh, data, f more the data side from the security piece. Um, how do, uh, it, first of all, I find that there's one, from a security aspect, it boils it down, you know, you got to boil it back down to the data. And I do find that a lot of folks don't really have a good handle on what data they have and where it lives. And that's why I think backup data into the cloud is kind of a handle on you know, it's, it's, it's kind of single-threaded. If I need to recover it, I'm doing like a file at a time. Um, it's easy, it's encrypted, it's stored securely. I, I get that part, right? It's when you start to get a lot of these moving parts about the data that people start to go, well, I don't know if I want that piece outside of my infrastructure. That's a, 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 with a database that might have social security numbers. But the rest of the analytic piece is, is this type of data. So I think, I think it's a little tough. I said, first, you got to have a good understanding of what data you have, and then secondly, I do think that we're, we are still slowly marching forward on that secure trust in the cloud thing and, and where is it and who owns it and you know what's getting out and what's not getting out. Okay, so uh, I mentioned at the, at the top of the program that uh, IBM Pulse is next week and you know IBM is a, you know, a very large company, lots of different shows, but Pulse is really you know, the cloud show for them. Um, when I look at IBM, they've got lots of entry points into the cloud. Obviously, they, they've got lots of infrastructure components. Uh, their, their large acquisition of soft layer uh, is one we want to talk about. Uh, and, and of course, you know, IBM has lots of services to help people you know, retrain their workforce, to look at their applications. They have a huge partner ecosystem. You know, wh what's your take on how's IBM doing in the cloud, Steve? So, uh, you know, internally, I, th I think that um, software is doing, doing really well, right? And I think that uh, there's a lot of, IBM is heavily focused on cloud and cloud services moving forward. And they do, they do talk a lot about infrastructure matters as a part of the cloud service. And so if I'm a CIO and I'm thinking about, okay, who am I going to trust my external data to, right? Obviously, I probably want it to be as someone like an IBM or even an Amazon, someone who has a big name, who's probably spending some money on the back end, and... Uh, is taking into concern my concerns as a CIO, right? Security we just talked about, right? Uh, am I staying up with the latest and greatest technology so that I'm getting the best, you know, overall cost per gigabyte or best overall dollar per IOP that I can out of the cloud? Because I'd like them to make sure that they're running their cloud the same way I would run my back-end infrastructure, so I'm getting all the economies of scale I get as time moves forward. So, so a quick question on that. You say IBM cares that, that infrastructure matters, and I, and I agree with you there. Yet, on the other hand, IBM has been shedding you know, a lot of its hardware businesses. So how, how do we parse that out? 
Yeah, so I mean, you know, I, I think they really care most about that the infrastructure that they're building the cloud on is is tightly coupled and in, 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 in together in such a way that I can go ahead and do things like spin up virtual machines, whether it's VMware, KVM, PowerVM, and have it also talk to storage in a seamless manner for the customer. So it's more than just the spinning disk or the CPU. I think it's a matter of what's the software components around that infrastructure that provide easy accessibility to folks that want to spin something up. Yeah, so, so right, software really owns a lot of it. Uh, you know, I, I had a chance to talk to some of the SoftLayer folks, uh, you know, leading up to the event here. I, I know there's some, you know, big announcements coming, which, you know, I, I can't preview here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, SoftLayer really is, you know, that, that core infrastructure as a service. So, you know, compute, uh, networking, and storage. And on top of that, you know, we're seeing IBM launch services. They already talked about, you know, Watson uh, on top of SoftLayer and expect to see, you know, many other services that, that IBM IBM's going to launch, so uh, you know, th think it's an interesting company. Uh, you know, the, some of the the big guys like you know Amazon and Google uh, and even Microsoft get a lot of the attention, but you know, micro uh, IBM you know could be a dark horse if they can really start you know delivering on these services and, and leverage their ecosystem. Yeah, I would agree with that. All right, uh, so so, uh, so Steve, we've uh, you know. We talked uh, about a lot of different topics on, on, on cloud. Uh, you know, uh, any any kind of final talking points? You say, what should people be watching this year? What maturity, uh, you know, you expect to see in the marketplace kind of the next six, 12 months or any other, uh, you know, kind of key points you'd want to see IA to look at? Well, I, I, think, I think there are two things, right? One is, if you haven't taken that first step into the cloud, I think you pick an application in your environment and I think data protection is a good one. Right, whether it be backup or replication uh, from, a, from a disaster recovery standpoint. I think you pick one of those and you, and you start to give it a try. You not only try it from a, from a technology aspect, but you also start looking at it from a financial aspect. Then you start to look at different companies or different things that you could actually put into the cloud right, where um, it's going to be easier for you to run your back-end business. And you know, if that's a particular database or a particular app or if it's test dev, then you look to the companies that allow you to do that provisioning very easily and quickly. Everybody talks about it, and because they know it's a requirement, the question is, who's providing that set of services for you today in, in a very fast and economical manner, right? Then you take that and you look at it from both, a, from both a technology perspective and an economic perspective, and then you slowly figure out which things make sense to move to the cloud. And I think, one, that's a direction, and two, I think what, what you look for, you look for that ease of use, because ease of use is really what's going to dictate the ability to be able to to easily migrate your stuff in, into the cloud in a cost-effective manner. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. Enterprise tech, we talk a lot about mergers and acquisitions that's going on. Uh, talk about some of these, you know, kind of multi-billion dollar acquisitions. Um, consumer tech just blew away enterprise tech this week because you turn on CNBC and, and all they are talking about is, you know, Facebook's ac acquisition of WhatsApp. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, Steve, is, is there lessons learned for, for the enterprise or, you know, what, what, what's your take on, you know, this, uh, you, know, you know, 13 to 19 billion dollar, you know, acquisition of Facebook. Facebook and WhatsApp. So uh, I will tell you that one of my um, uh, big interests around technologies or technology companies like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon, and I actually wrote about this in a blog piece uh, right around the time Facebook went public. One of the things that's interesting to me, yes, it's a social media platform, but think about the fact that Facebook runs almost a billion email accounts, and how often are they down? And name another enterprise in the world that does that, that doesn't have major issues, right? From a technology backend perspective, they had something interesting. So from an M&A perspective, which is kind of where you were going with this, my, my thought is, I am curious to see how they integrate that into the overall Facebook experience, right? If they have an architecture, a backend architecture that allows that to happen seamlessly and easily, right? That's pretty impressive, right? I think a lot of IT shops would want to be able to, you know, how many, how many acquisitions do we hear about where, okay, they bought the company, they brought them in, and, you know, it's just kind of fludgering around or whatnot, right? But if I can integrate and do that effectively, and, and I'm doing that in a cloud type of a platform, which they are doing that today, that's really, really interesting. So, you know, huge acquisition, very interesting. Um, more interesting will be 
you know, where does it go inside of Facebook? I think that, that, that'll be an interesting note. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people compare, you know, Instagram has kind of been left a little bit on the side, hasn't been a lot of integration. Of course, the, the WhatsApp founders, when, when they launched the site, said, you know, they're never going to have any ads. And, of course, that, that's so much of the revenue on Facebook. So uh, and I heard people say, you know, 19 billion and, you know, no ads. You know, there's no way that's going to happen. Because uh, if you're talking, you know, a dollar a year for some, uh, you know, customers and, you know, let's let's say they got to a couple of billion uh, you know users out there it's still going to take a long time to recoup that 19 billion dollar investment uh, so steve uh, thanks as always for joining us here on this cube from conversation uh, lots of events we're going to be covering and expect we'll be getting you back here uh, on the program often uh, so uh, please be sure to you know tune in uh, if you go to siliconangle.tv uh, you can see all of our upcoming events and recent events including all of the cloud ones uh, that we have there live.siliconangle.tv is the constant stream of uh, content coming out of us, uh, siliconangle.com for all the news, and wikibon.org for all of the analysis. Uh, this is Stu Miniman from the uh, Wikibon office in Marlboro. Thanks for joining us.